a lot of people will like, so a lot of people will say like, go see a therapist. But then a lot of people are like kind of confused because they've never seen a therapist. They don't know how it works. And then they think like, oh, like I don't know how to do that because I've never done it before. And so that makes perfect sense because we're not really taught like what the, the rules of therapy are. So what we're going to try to do is I'm going to try to share a couple of like four basic points about, you know, how to approach therapy. So the first is that it's not your responsibility to know what the rules of therapy are. So I know this is like a really challenging thing to understand, but you know, when you go to the hospital, like let's say you go see your doctor, like let's say you get diagnosed with like cancer, okay? So heaven forbid. It's not your job to know like what to do. It's not even your job to like seek a diagnosis, right? So as medical doctors, like all you have to do is go see your doctor and your doctor, it's their responsibility to like, you know, check your body, check it for lumps, do a colonoscopy after you're 50 years old, like do a mammogram after a certain age. It's the expert's job to know what to do, right? So I think about like going to a car mechanic, like you just go in and you say, hey, my car is making a weird noise. And then they're like, what kind of noise? And you're like, I don't know. A woo -woo. Like, you know, you just, you're, it's, you're not supposed to know. You're not supposed to know if it's a fan belt or a carburetor or like a, you know, like an oil leak. You're not supposed to know anything. You're just supposed to show up and you're supposed to be like, here I am. Here's a basic direction for my problem. My car doesn't seem to be working right. You don't even, you just say that. So with a therapist, all you really need to come in with is like just a general reason. And it doesn't even have to be a good one. You can just say like, life is hard for me right now, right? And they're gonna help you figure it out. So the first thing is that you don't, it's not your responsibility like how to know, like how to be good in therapy. Like you can even go in and ask your therapist, how am I supposed to do this? I've never done this before. And like, we're all trained to help orient you to like how this works. So for example, anytime I see someone for the first time, I'll ask them, hey, have you ever been in therapy? Like, do you understand how this stuff works? And they'll be like, no. And I'd be like, hey, can I take a few minutes to explain it to you? And they'll be like, yeah, I'd really appreciate that, right? So that's like part of my opener as a therapist. If someone comes in, I understand that like most people don't know how this works. So I have to explain to them the rules of the game. So the first thing is you don't have to know. So just, you don't have to know really anything. You just show up with a general idea of what you're looking for. You can say, I feel depressed or I'm lusting over a streamer or, you know, like whatever. I don't know what's wrong with my life. I just feel like I'm stuck. Like all that kind of stuff is perfect. You just need like one sentence of generally speaking why you're coming. You can even go in and say, hey, I'm not even sure why I'm here, but like I've heard that a lot of people benefit from therapy. So I'm here to try it out. And like, that's actually awesome. So then like the therapist knows, okay, cool. I know what I'm dealing with. They'll start to ask you questions and stuff like that. They'll take over. Right? You just have to bring the car to the shop and then the mechanic will figure out what they're supposed to do. So the second thing is that, the uh, second thing to understand is that therapy is not a passive process. So some people will say like, oh, if this is your problem, go to therapy. And so what some people will do is they'll like go to therapy and they'll be like, here I am. Therapize me and fix it. Uh, you know, like, but that's not actually how therapy works. So the success in therapy has to do with how much the, the patient is invested and how much the therapist in, is invested. So when you go to therapy, like expect to do the work. It's not your job to know what you're supposed to do, but you still have to do the work. So a lot of times people will say, I tried therapy and it didn't work for me. And oftentimes when I dig into those kinds of cases, I'll say like, what didn't work for you? And oftentimes what I'll run across, maybe like 30 to 40% of people are like very, very passive and don't actually like try to do anything. So the analogies I'd use here is like going to work with a personal trainer. So the personal trainer is the expert. Like you can walk up to a personal trainer and you can say, hey, I'm trying to get into shape. That's all you have to say. They will figure out, they'll figure out the how, right? It's not your job to understand like how these weights work or whether you should do cardio or whether you should do like, you know, heavy weights or like low reps or high reps or body weight exercises or like parkour or like a decathlon. Like it's not your job to figure it out. It's their job to figure it out. But once they tell you what to do, you have to sit down and actually lift the weights. And so I'd say therapy is kind of the same way where you can't just show up. It's not like a passive procedure, like a biopsy or an x-ray where you just sit there and they do it to you. It's not like taking a pill where you just like just swallow and then like the antidepressant is going to work its magic. As a therapy, you have to be an active participant. And even if you say, I don't know how to do that, 
that's a great thing to ask your therapist. You can ask your therapist, hey, how am I being active enough? Like, should I be doing more? Like, how can I be a better patient in therapy? Like, but generally speaking, don't assume it's a passive process. Understand that when you go in, the more you think, the more you share, and the more kind of vulnerable you are, for lack of a better term. You have to try, right? You have to persevere. You have to be patient. Those are all really important parts of therapy. So the third thing to understand is that in addition to trying, if it's not working, you need to bring it up with your therapist. This is probably the thing that is, if I were to pick one prognostic factor, so one factor that predicts success in therapy versus not success in therapy, it's the patient bringing up their concerns with the therapist. So as a therapist, we're not like mind readers, right? If you come in and you kind of like say, and I ask you, hey, how are things going? And you say like, everything is going well because you're trying to be polite because you don't want your therapist to feel bad that their therapy is not helping you. So you're actually trying to protect them from feeling bad because, oh, it's not their fault. It's your fault because, you know, you're so depressed that you're unhelpable. But you need to tell therapists if stuff isn't working. So you got to say, hey, I've been coming here for like a month or two. Like, I'm not really feeling a whole lot better. Can we talk about that? Like, I feel like I come here every week and we talk about my feelings, but I actually am not seeing much change in my life. Like, this is not what I was hoping for. I was hoping for more. And they may ask you, what were you hoping for? And then you may say, I'm not sure, but it, but it isn't this, which is a completely acceptable answer. So then it is the therapist's responsibility. You may feel in that moment like, oh, how is this per person supposed to help me? if I don't even know what I want. And then you're gonna feel ashamed of yourself and you're not gonna to wanna to share that. But it's absolutely the therapist's responsibility and your responsibility for the two of you to figure it out together. That's what therapy is about. It's a co-op game, right? So if someone, even if you don't understand like how to cook, like if you take a bite of something, you say it tastes off and you're not the trained chef and then the chef asks you like, how does it taste off? And you're like, I'm not sure. It just doesn't taste good. And then, the, then like the chef should start asking you questions, right? They should start like, oh, is it like, is it too salty? No, okay, fine. Does it need some spice? No, it's, the spice is fine. Oh, maybe like, how about some citrus? Like, let's try a little bit of citrus. And you're like, oh yeah, that's in the right direction. So you have to bring up your concerns with your therapist about it not working, okay? That's the third thing you've gotta do. And the fourth thing is to remember that modalities of therapy are different. So therapy, much like food, has many different varieties, okay? So you've got like, the third wave of therapies, which include like a lot of mindfulness. So this is like acceptance and commitment therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy. Then before that, <clears throat> kind of the second generation of therapy was like cognitive behavioral therapy. And so that tends to be a little bit more structured. Like sometimes you have worksheet and homework. It's uh, worksheets and homework. Like it's like very like, first you do this, then you do this, then you do this. It's very systematic. And then like, you know, way before that you had like Freud and Jung who would do like psychoanalysis. So Freud would like have people lay down on a couch and he would sit behind them and wouldn't say anything for an hour. And then like they'd meet for like one hour a day. Like it was like a daily therapy thing where people are like free associating. So there are lots of different models of therapy. It's sort of like saying, I don't like video games. Like you may not like video games, you may not like FPS. You may like, you know, MOBAs. You may not like MOBAs. You may like, you know, chess. You may not like chess. You may like, you know, Candy Crush or whatever. And so there are lots of different kinds of cuisines and lots of different types of therapy. So if you're not, if something isn't working for you, you can also, you know, try out something else or even bring that up with your therapist. In addition to the different modalities, there are different levels of activity. So one thing that I've observed is that a lot of people seem to like my style, which is a very like high activity style. So some people don't like it. Like some people will, you know, think that they want me to like STFU, but you know, so, so I think something is changing where like this generation, like the digital generation is looking for more active therapists in my experience. So a lot of the older therapists who are a little bit more passive, who are a little bit like, let's just see where this goes. You can't rush therapy. It's going to take six months. It's going to take a year. It's going to take two years. It's going to take three years. I get bored and impatient. I'm like, I, I want, there's a lot of impatience in some therapists. But I think that there's a lot of impatience with a lot of patients as well. But that's kind of like, I think that's okay. Whereas I think a lot of my colleagues like feel like that's a bad thing. And one of the most important things that you can teach in therapy is you have to teach a patient to be patient. I sort of disagree a little bit there. Um, I think it's a little bit paternalistic. And it's like, oh, we have to teach you how it is because you don't know the right, the truth. But 
So I, I think that remember that there's a lot of different modalities of therapy. There's a lot of different like types of therapists. So two CBT therapists may not be the same. I've worked with some th CBT therapists that are very focused on the past. I've worked with some that kind of completely ignore the past. Um, so there's a lot of different stuff to do. So remember, if you're kind of considering therapy and you don't know how to do it, the first thing to remember is that you're not expected how to do it. They're the expert, right? So that's what they're there for. They're there to help orient you. So just take your car to the mechanic and say it's making a weird sound. And then when they're like, then it's their job to figure it out. Second thing is to remember that it's an active process. So you can't just show up and like get yourself therapized. It's not like getting a cortisone shot, you know, into a joint. It's not like taking an antibiotic pill or an antidepressant. You have to show up there and the therapist is sort of like a personal trainer, or that's really what we kind of think of as coaches. Um, you know, the, the, the coach is a, a personal trainer for the mind. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to show up and do some of the work, right? Like ideally 50% of it. Third thing is if it isn't working for some reason, bring that up with them because that's something that you all have to problem solve together. And the fourth thing is to remember that not all therapists are the same and not all modalities are the same. So even if you don't, it's, you know, just because you don't like French cuisine doesn't mean you don't like food. It's just that's one kind of cuisine and there's Indian food and there's sushi and there's like, you know, Thai food and there's like Nigerian cuisine. There's all these different kinds of cuisine. And so before you write off cuisine, like food as a whole, try a couple of different things and then a couple of chefs within the cuisine, right? They're going to be like different versions of sushi. There's like, you know, the Americanized version of sushi, which is like lots of different toppings and sauces and stuff like that. And there's like the classic, like, you know, sort of Japanese sushi, which is just like, you know, fish or rice and fish with a little bit of wasabi or whatever. So there are different flavors of even an individual modality. So if you guys are thinking about therapy, definitely check it out. You don't have to know how to be good at therapy before you do it. Um, and lean on your therapist to help show you the way.